Welcome, friends, to Farm Fresh Designs 59. I apologize for my voice today. The pollen decided to go down my throat last night when I was outside raking some magnolia leaves. My video today is going to show you three different projects using the Rust-Oleum Serenity Blue Paint. This is the first project. It's actually a little, um, little planter that I found at the Dollar Tree, and it was in the more expensive section. I think it was $5. And on the other side is engraved or kind of chiseled in the word home, but this other side was just plain. So I took the foam out of it and the greenery, um, and I'm just using it as a planter for um, whatever. It's, it's not really concrete, um, but it feels similar to that. And it is a little bit heavy. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking a napkin. And if you'll remember, um, I've talked about before how I like to use a water pen on a napkin and separate the different designs on it. And then today I'm using decoupage napkin medium to put it on. And I put just three different flowers on it. And then at the end, I put just a little bit on the side because I just think that when you're decoupaging and you're putting a design on something, when you put it on the front, I just think it adds so much character to have just a little bit on the side. And just remember when you're using a napkin, um, once you put it on, you're not going to be able to pick it back up at all. It will usually tear. So the key to that is just going slow and not using a heavy hand when you're putting the Mod Podge on. And it dries very quickly. But I really like this napkin. I've used it several different times before. Um, it's a really pretty napkin, and it's, it's kind of like a round napkin that's got scalloped around the edge. And I'm down to my last one and a half napkins. So I'm using it very sparingly, and I need to figure out where I got it. So I can order some more because I think these colors are just so pretty. And I like it on this Rust-Oleum Serenity Blue um, paint. Normally when you decoupage, you put it on white. But I just think these color flowers look really good on this paint. And I think it's sturdy enough where you might could even put a potted plant in it. Um, but I would just be very careful um, and make sure that you don't get water on the outside. But I will tell you that I sealed it really well um, all around. And I even painted on the other side that said home. I won't really ever use that part, but I went on and painted it anyway. And I painted the inside and I painted the bottom because I wanted it to be very seamless. So I apologize for my hand being in the way. But I really like this little planner. And um, I probably won't put a real plan in it um, because um, I have a reputation at my house for um, killing green plants. So if you're a big plant lumber, I'm so sorry, but I just don't have much success with plants. Now, this next project is this box that I found at Hobby Lobby in the wood section. And it's really kind of neat. It has a drawer in it. Now, the drawer doesn't open up all the way. Um, and I didn't paint the back of it because what it really is, is it's like a shelf that you would put on the wall and it's, then you've got a drawer. So it's, it's really kind of neat. So, um, whether I use this at home or if I put it in my vendor booth, um, I probably will go back and paint the back of it if I decide to put it in my vendor booth. But if I decide to keep this at home, I'm not because it's meant to go right up against the wall. Now, this transfer is gorgeous. It's made by Timeless Designs, and it's called Spring and Marcel. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's the name of a French city. And um, I will share that in the description of the video. But this is one of my favorites because um, the design in the flowers, it's not exactly the same colors as the color of the florals in the napkin, but they are so, so close. And so I decided to use this transfer. 
and I like it because it's got the notes on it. Um, by the way, don't ever ask me to sing because God did not give to me with that talent of singing. Um, but I do like to listen to people sing. And so remember when you put on a transfer, go pretty slow about it because um, you want to make sure that it all goes down. And you'll notice that as I'm putting the transfer on, I pull it up a little bit and I'll notice that you know, some part of it kind of still is catching. So I put it back down and scrape it. Now, what's really important when, before you put a transfer on, when you paint something, put a sealer on it. Um, and then make sure that sealer is dry. And then um, it makes the transfer go on so much better. Um, but if that sealer doesn't dry and the paint doesn't dry very well, unfortunately, the transfer will stick to um, the paint or the trans, I'm sorry, the sealer, and then it can ruin that transfer. But please don't ask me how I know that. I may could have done that a couple times because I've said it before in one of my other videos. I'm a very impatient person, so I have to try to be very patient when I'm working with transfers. And the reason I decided to put this transfer on the side is because I'm going to put a mold beside that. Um, I did not use any stamping with French script um, because with the, the musical notes, I thought that that was just enough extra detail. And I was afraid that if I put any French script writing on it, that it would just take away from this pretty transfer. But look at those colors. Is that not gorgeous? And really, those colors, because they're kind of darker, that actually would go into the fall because of the darkness of the flowers. So I finally got it up, and then once you finish it all up, you use that same piece of plastic, and you burnish it, which means that you lightly rub it across it, and it basically rubs that transfer in. But look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? I really like it. Now, I have had a transfer before, and I can't remember which one it was, but when I tried to burnish it, some of the um, transfer, the color in it kind of started moving, um, and I was really disappointed. It was not an IOD transfer. Um, theirs are pretty, their, their color, colors in their transfers stay really well, but I've never had that to happen before, so I try to be really careful. Now, this is a silicone mold, and it's by Redesign with Prima, and it is called Floral Daisy. Now, I don't really think that the flowers look exactly like daisies, but they sort of mimic the flowers and the transfer. Now, when you use a silicone mold that is not IOD, it doesn't have that little lip around it. But because I've been doing molds for so long, I'm pretty good at it, um, and I don't really have a problem with it. Um, remember, you just push it down into that mold with your thumb, and then you can take like a gift card or some sort of stiff card and kind of scrape over it real easy, or you may use something else. Sometimes people use those pampered chefs, um, you know, the little silicone things that you're supposed to clean your, um, your pans with, those like the pizza stones. Some people use those. Now, what I really like about this transfer is this one has like a little stem with it. But let me just warn you that when you have those really thin pieces, that sometimes when you try to pull them out of the transfer, I'm sorry, when you try to pull them out of the mold, it will break. So here's a secret. Put it in the freezer of your refrigerator for about 10 to 15 minutes, and it begins to set up, and then it comes out really easy. And it doesn't do anything to the air dry clay. It doesn't mess the integrity of the clay. Um, it just makes it hard enough to where you can set it up. And because this um, does not have the lip on the edge, I tend to go a little bit slower when I scrape. And you might notice that I know what the design is like. I know what, what shape it's going to take. So a lot of times with the non-IOD molds, see how I'm kind of pushing my finger in it? I try to go around the edges and I roll that clay right up to the design. 
to make sure that um, I don't have any extra clay on the side. And on this particular flower, there's a stem that actually goes up from the top of it. But once I take it out, I kind of pull that off a little bit. So I've got one flower on a stem, and then I'm going to add one extra flower. And then I think I have one or maybe just one leaf that I add to it. And you'll notice that once I put it on the box, um, I put it down in the right-hand corner instead of putting it right in the center because I think it just adds a little bit of extra interest if everything is not completely um, cylindrical. Did I say that? Symmetrical. That's, what, that's the word I was thinking about. And I don't show it once I glue it to the box, but I... Um, after it dries, I go back and just paint it with the same Serenity Blue. I didn't really want to put a different color on the flower um, because, I, well, I wanted to be good at color matching it. And so I tried several different colors to try to match up the colors in the transfer. And um, it didn't work. So I just decided that I would paint it the same blue as the box. But what I did do once it dried, the paint dried on the molds is that I put some white wax on it and see how I put it down in the corner and I use tight bond glue to attach it um, and it I don't like to um, dry or I'm sorry paint it when it's completely wet I do give it just a little bit of time oh and good gracious girls look at that little um, stick I found it's um, they're called resin mold stirring sticks and the other day when I went to Hobby Lobby to get some more um, casting resin, I saw those in that same department. Oh, I was so excited because normally I use popsicle sticks because I'm not, I don't really like the feel of glue on my fingers. So I use popsicle sticks a lot. But unfortunately, popsicle sticks, you know, once you get the, um, the glue on it, you pretty much have to throw them away. And I was going through a lot of popsicle sticks. So when I found these um, stirring sticks that for resin or mold, oh, I was so excited. And I think I got like, um, I got 12 of them for $8.99. So since I go through popsicle sticks so much, I figured eventually I would save some money and it was worth it. So I'm just adding them all on and I'm going to let them dry just for a little while before I paint them. And then I don't put anything on the side or anything on the front because I'm afraid that if I do too much, it'll make it too busy, mostly because that transfer is such a busy transfer. And there's my trusty little, um, oh gracious, my mind's not working tonight. Um, I can't even think what that thing is, but I'm using that to um, get the little extra glue off. And then I'm pushing it down on the sides because even though, um, you know, I've put it on with glue, it still can kind of pull up just a little bit. So I do it super easy so that um, I don't mess with the mold. I just barely touch the edges to try to get it pressed down really good. And it's actually upside down when you're looking at it on the page. Okay, now the next thing is like... It's one of those like jewelry boxes or treasure boxes that you find at the thrift shop. And when I bought it, it was it was a kind of a burgundy brownish color. And um, I painted it in a lavender color. And that's what I was going to use it for. And then I decided that I didn't like that. So I had already painted it by the time I started this. Now, what I did do that I didn't show you is I put slick stick on it from Dixie Belle because um, when I did put that purple paint on it, I didn't put slick stick on it, which kind of seals it really good. And by the time I got ready to paint it this color, I noticed that you could see that um, if you barely touched it, the paint would come off. So I used slick stick on it this time before I painted it and I used that Rust-Oleum Serenity Blue. Now, this is that same napkin, and because it's scalloped on the edges, I don't want the scallop part to show. So, with my little water pen, I'm actually kind of um, pulling that scallop part off and just trying to get to the flower. 
and then there's a little part that's straight. So I use my water pen to um, kind of pull that off, and it makes it so much easier. And there's less chance of tearing it when you use that water pen. So on the inside, I think I do about three flowers. Um, remember, when you're decorating, um, you're supposed to do things in odd numbers because it's supposed to be more pleasing to the eye. And the reason I'm putting these napkins on the inside is when I sell different things, I like people to see it and maybe to open up the drawer and go, oh my goodness, look at that extra detail that I went to that extra trouble to make the inside just as pretty as the outside. Um, and I think it sells it much better when when they can open up a drawer to a little dresser and see a stamp on the inside or maybe you stenciled something on the inside um and it just it just adds so much character to it now granted nobody might ever see the inside of it but you know it when you open it and every time you open it you're gonna think oh, look at those pretty little flowers on the inside and it just makes it prettier all over and I also use that napkin decoupage. Now, one of the things that I did, when you use um, a decoupage medium, a lot of times it's kind of shiny. And I knew that if I only used it on those napkins, that the inside of the bowl or the little treasure chest, that it would only be shiny in that area. Well, I didn't want that. I wanted it to all look the same on the inside. So I used that decoupage medium and kind of brushed it all along on the inside just so that the finish wouldn't look different on the inside. And then um, probably tomorrow I will go back and I'll add a little bit more decoupage medium to the top of the napkins just to protect them some. So once again, I want to apologize for my voice tonight. Um, if it sounds like I've had to start a couple different times and you know, it's because I need to just stop the voiceover and I need to drink some water. Um, and I'm actually not going to post this video till tomorrow, but tomorrow I have my granddaughters. I keep them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And um, I could get up super early in the morning to go ahead and get this video ready and then post it tomorrow afternoon. But I'm thinking that um, as bad as I sound right now, um, after I sleep all night, I'm probably going to sound more like a frog in the morning. So I decided to go ahead and get it over with tonight <laughs> because um, I don't want to wait till tomorrow. Um, and I want to make sure I get it up tomorrow, no tomorrow night. Um, so, um, so I apologize if I sound pretty rough. Now, I did paint um, the top. Um, I'm, in, I'm sorry, the inside of the top and the bottom of the treasure chest or trinket box. Um, but I showed you that it was not painted. But what I did do was I went on um, after I got everything done and I put the slick stick on it and then I painted it with the, um, the same color. Now, I did go back. I'm not going to show this because um, I didn't want the video to be too long, but I used white wax on all the detail and then I used the gilding wax on the detail as well. Because, well, I'm one of those girls that likes a lot of bling. And I just like that extra glimmer to it. And the gilding wax is made by DIY Paints. And I just love it because it adds just a little bit of extra shimmer to it. And I guess because of the what it's made out of, I use the same brush all the time. Um, and I put it over in a separate spot so that I won't accidentally use it for paint. Um, and it the brush stays soft so it doesn't get stiff or anything. And I use that on the detail on the top and around the edges of the top. I put it on that. And then the bottom part of the trinket box, the the legs on it have some really pretty detail. Um, and then it has that same kind of um, braided edge up at the top of it. So on the bottom, I use the gilding wax on that. And um, on that little lid, I put some gilding wax on that. Just because I like that little extra touch. And if if you're not a girl that likes a lot of bling, it would be just as pretty with just plain white wax. Um, but I like I like shiny stuff. And um, my, my kids laugh at me. Sometime I'll tell y'all a funny story about a white jacket that I had that had rhinestones on it. And my kids may have tried to call me Elvis. So... 
Um, sometime I might tell you that, but it's a pretty embarrassing story, so I probably won't. And so I'm just kind of wiping it off and getting it all ready. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the bottom of it. So tell me, do you like that gold gilding wax on it? Or would you say, no, nope, I think it would be no enough with the white. And think back onto that box that had the transfer on it. Would you have put a stamp on it? Would you have done some extra French script on it? And then on that little planner, do you are you somebody that has green plants at your house? Um, or, or are you like me? You're only allowed to use faux plants at your house. Uh, my family just will not even let me have green plants. Um, because I, I forget to water them. Um, I can be pretty um, scatterbrained sometimes. So my family will only let me have green plants that you can get at Ikea. That way it looks like I have some greenery in my home. And they look pretty real. And then they can be pretty impressive. And then nobody has to really know um, that I'm not good at keeping plants alive. So shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Y'all have to keep my secret. So I'm going to finish it off like that and look at the inside. Isn't that just beautiful? I just really like that. I've always liked something on the inside. Okay, guys, we're coming to the end of the video. And here are all three projects staged. Um, I've got a little bit of, remember, faux greenery on, on the inside of that planter. And see how you can see the little teeny flowers on the side? I just think that makes it so pretty. And I love those colors. And this is actually like a little dresser that I found at a thrift shop for $10. And it's almost like a little baby doll dresser. Okay, so here is where you can see where I just painted the flowers, um, the little um, clay flowers. But I did put some white wax on them. And I didn't put any gilding wax on this because it. I just didn't think it would look very good on this. Because there wasn't really any other place to put it. And I've got me a little hang tag on the dresser, like Lisa from Our Shabby Cottage. If y'all like Lisa, you know we all love hang tags. And here's the trinket box. I've got it propped open, so one more time you can see those really pretty flowers on the inside, and you can see that gilding wax. But guys, thank you so much for watching tonight. Um, y'all have been so wonderful, and you've made just the sweetest comments, and Actually, in 10 days, I'm over a 1,000 subscribers, which just blows my mind. Um, I just can't believe that I've gotten that many subscribers in such a short amount of time. So keep watching because there's going to be a special video coming this weekend. But I'm working really hard on it. But make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.